here. All right, so we're going to be jumping right into it. If you're just joining, this is your girl, Lady J, and today we're going to be discussing um, the part of the four pillows of intimacy. Last week, we did the security and safety. Today, we're going to be doing the knowing and being known, and so we're going to jump right into it. Uh, we'll open the line soon for you to get a call. If you have questions, I'll be here looking for your questions to answer them for you. Just give me at least 30 minutes to be able to round this up and then you can call and ask questions or you can type your questions. Please let me know where you're watching from. I'd like to know where you're watching from. Please invite your friends. We all have relationship problems. I have relationship problems. You have relationship problems. And we wanna make sure if you don't have a relationship, you might be in a relationship soon and you might wanna know what you need to do. So please invite your friends, share the video. Invite your sisters, your, your, your aunties, your, your brothers, your fathers, everybody just bring them on here. Share the video. You can do 20 shares in, in different pick places. So do that so we can have a lot of people here listening to this, okay? All right, tag your friends too. So the second pillow of intimacy is knowing and being known. Knowing and being known. So when I saw this, I was like, ooh. Mm. Okay, so like, you know, what's going on here? And um, I, I just went into it to, you know, do a, some little research about it. First and foremost, we're going to be talking about the knowing. So when I say knowing, we're talking about you knowing the person you're with. The knowing that they're talking about here is knowing the person you're with. And being known is if the person you're with knows you. Mm? So the know is knowing who you're with and being known is the person that you're with knowing you. Because in an intimate relationship, that's what happens. You have to know your partner and your partner has to know you. So I'm gonna go into what it states. It said, knowing and being known refers to the way in which both partners know each other. And that's what I just said. Mm? How both partners know each other. How well do you know your significant other? And how well does your significant other knows you? That is very important when it comes to uh, intimacy. Because if you don't know someone and I don't want to go into the biblical no, because you know, in the Bible they say, and I don't knew his wife. That means I don't slept with his wife. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about knowing. Like if you sit with the person, like I said last week, and you see the person's kind of like off in their continent, you'd be like, um, honey, what's, what's wrong? Like, you know. You know, if, you know, the person's not feeling happy, they don't have to come and tell you, I'm not happy. You will just see and know that this person is not happy. And so knowing somebody tells you something about your partner, you'd be like, uh-uh, that's not the way my partner behaves. No. So knowing and being known. And that is very important when it comes to the intimacy part of a relationship. Please continue to share the video and invite your friends. So even if you say you feel safe, like reasonably safe, you are not likely to experience intimacy unless you really know each other. So even if you feel safe or reasonably safe, we talked about safety last week, you are not likely to experience intimacy if you really don't know each other. And I wanna break this down because a lot of times, you know, people think that if they have sex with a person, then they know them. No, sex can be done between animals. It can be done between anybody. Two people can just meet and they're attracted sexually and they just do what they have to do, bam, and be done. So that's not knowing a person. So you can feel safe with that person. Oh, like, okay, when I, I'm with this person, they put their hands around me, they don't threaten me and stuff like that. But if you don't really know them, know them, you are missing out on the intimacy part of it. So get to know each other. Get to know who your person is. 
get to let the person get to know you. Last week, I did mention when you start a relationship, you don't want to go into just starting to explain. And it's true. That knowing process, I feel, comes to be maybe held and dealt with after that first 90 days when you guys have, and I'm just saying 90 days, it doesn't necessarily have to be. Everybody have their own time frame of when they feel comfortable. But when do you feel comfortable enough to open up for that person to know you? Why do I tick? Why does this person tick? Why is this person like this? What are some of the things that I, as a, as a, as a girlfriend, does to my man that he does not like? Knowing that person is important because if you don't know the person, maybe you think acting jealous in your relationship will get you to the next level. The person will think, oh, you love them. People be always saying, say, always saying that, oh, if you don't love somebody, you're not going to be jealous of them. But if you actually know someone, then jealousy won't come up because if you know them, you'll be able to understand. Like, okay, me and this person were together. You know, I know sometimes their eyes can wander here and there, but that's just, you know, it doesn't go far. It doesn't go far. That's kind of where it stops. I know my man. So knowing that person is important. The way you talk to the person, if you talk to that person, are they going to be back in your face like that and stuff like that? Or are they just going to kind of like walk away and be like, you know what? I don't like the way you talk to me. So I'm just going to leave you alone. And, you know, you deal with, Maybe you're in a bad time. I'm just going to let you deal with your situation. If you know that this is how you're going to be treated, if you behave in a certain way, would you? No, you won't. You'd be like, okay, I'm not going to do this. I'm going to be the best I can be for my relationship. And then this is what I know that I will get in return. So that's just what it is. A lot of times women think that if they you know, on a man like this, or men think that if they own a woman like that and stuff like that, then they're going to be able to get, they're going to be able to get forward. But you don't get forward in your relationship if you're like that, though. You don't. Um, you, you have to try to, to get to know the person. Not knowing someone would take away the opportunities that you might have to be able to build something. If the person is not married and they, maybe they're in a troubled relationship and you don't know that you know this person needs to be to come out of that relationship and you could be the person that would take them out of that troubled relationship that they're in. And you go there too and you start doing the same thing the person doing, you lose your chance. You lose those chances. So you just have to get to know who you are dealing with. Who you are dealing with. Let that person get to know you too. You'll have those sit down conversations where you be like, this is what I like. This is what I don't like. Those conversations needs to be asked. If you're with somebody and they're not ready to sit down and have those conversations with you, they are not ready for a relationship. I'm going to repeat. If you have a, a person that you're seeing and they are not ready to have those one-on-one -on -one harsh conversations, not harsh as in yelling, but those harsh conversations where the reality of who you are and who they are come out, then they're not ready. And if they're not ready, then you have to, sometimes you have to give them time, but you have to bring it up at least so they know, you know, so you get to know them. I just want to know you. I just want to get to understand who you are. Some people are not going to open up to you. They're not going to say anything. Sometimes they will say it only once. And if you grab it, fine. But doing that one time, if you don't grab it, then you are, that's it. And they will just say offhandedly, you know, I don't like for people to talk to me some kind of way. If you talk to me some kind of way, I'm just going to stay away from you. And you might think that that is just, you know, a passing by statement. And you'd be like, oh, okay. But when it actually happens and you start to see that, okay, this person meant what he said when he said X, Y, Z. So it's good to be able to listen to people when they tell you about themselves. Yeah, open up to the conversation and listen. Don't just be there and be out of it or just be so much in love that you're not listening because listening 
is going to take you far in a relationship. Listen to that, what that person said, because people will tell you. People will tell you. They will tell you. I don't like this. I don't like that. I don't like my man cussing me out there. I don't like my woman misbehaving to me out there. If you got something to tell me, let's go home and discuss it. And you also, you so much in love and you don't want to, you, you list, you're hearing, but you are not listening. You're not taking it in. And you know, situation happened, be like, but why are you behaving like that? Why should you behaving like this? What she told you. So knowing is very important. The rewards of truly knowing another and truly being known by another are enamors is very important. That's the big, that's a big component of intimacy. Because if you know somebody, then you get to model yourself into who they are and what they like if you really love that person. But if you don't love the person, you don't get to model yourself. Why do you think sometimes men can change, women can change? If you're old doors, don't change their tricks. Old doors can change. When that old door like that person, it can be an old man with a very young girl. If he really loved that girl and stuff like that with all the power he has, he would be like, mm. well, they will must say, I'm gonna go out tonight. He will call his friend in, my man, my woman said, I'm gonna go out tonight. My leg said, I'm gonna go out tonight. So I see you. You're going to enjoy yourself. That is somebody who knows that they want something and they're getting a reward from it. People can change. People can change for other people if they want to be with that person. They got some women, very beautiful. They, they, they got all, they got the money, they got a, a good family background. They got everything. They got, you know, they're very educated. But because of all these things that they got, they sometimes be arrogant. They don't know how to submit to a man. And sometimes you do those things, you're just going to be, you know, there. A man will come, he will have a fun, and he will go. Because at the end of the day, there is some pride. You have to get to know people. Know who you're dealing with. The same thing with a man. A woman comes, she take a look at you, and you are what the place, and you're not trying to do anything that's going to make her feel a certain kind of way. She take a look one, two, three times. She be like, "No, you know what? This is not for me. I'm out," and she goes away. So let's find ways and means to know each other, because knowing, as this thing truly states, there are rewards, and those rewards are enormous. Knowing someone is like driving a car that gives you a directions via the, 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 the GPS. So if it tells you turn right, you're gonna turn right. You're not gonna tell the person, I'm not gonna turn right. Then you won't get to the place you wanna get. If it said take a left turn, you take a left turn. At the end of the day, you got an exit coming up. You're not gonna say, I'm not going to that exit. There. If I tell that exit, there, you will take that exit because you know you want to get to that point that you're going to. So unless you get to know that person, that relationship ain't going nowhere. So this goes beyond knowing the details of your partner's life. It also includes knowing about his inner world, vulnerabilities, fantasies, dark places, and wonderful places. I'm going to go over that because I'm going to break that down for us, OK? I'm going to break it down. Break, 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 break. This goes beyond knowing the details of your partner's life. Details means, oh, my man sleeps at nine o'clock. You know, he gets up in the morning. Or my woman it works at a, a big hospital in a big city. Those are details of your partner's life. She likes to drink shandy. She likes to drink red wine. She likes to wear her hair down. Those are details of a person's life and what they do. We're talking about knowing inner world and inner world. What is someone's inner world? Someone's inner world is a world that the outside people don't know about. Hmm? What is my inner world? What y'all don't know about me? What I decide not to make public on the blue app. That's my inner world. My inner world 
where I do all my different things with my inner circle. I do have an inner circle that I trust. And they don't be, we don't hang together and then can't take pictures or all the kind of things and stuff that I know. That is my inner world, where I let my hair down, where I say stuff, where I dance goofy, where I do all these crazy things. That's my inner world. You have to know your partner's inner world. Does your partner smoke? Does your partner drink? Is your partner, you know, what, what, the, what does your partner do during the recreational time, during the leisure time? That is someone's inner world. Who do they hang out with? Do they like rock bands? What is your partner's inner world? Mm? Second thing, vulnerabilities, hurts. Vulnerabilities is like me, the best way I can, in, can, because I said it last week, but I'm going to be able to say this now again. I'm going to say this again. Vulnerability is making your, exposing yourself to something that might be threatening or harmful to you. So when it comes to the vulnerabilities, opening yourself, like telling someone, I, you know, I had a relationship some years ago and I dated this girl and she broke my heart. And, you know, it took me nine months to get over the reason why she did, the reason why I felt she broke my heart because she went out with my best friend. That's being vulnerable. Giving that kind of information, that's being vulnerable. Because you don't give those kind of information to just anybody. You give it to people that you care about, that care about you. And you're not giving it to them because you want them to hurt you. You're giving it to them so that they understand you. So now when, because that thing has happened, this person is conditioned. They are conditioned, conditioned in a way that when they see friends coming around their woman or their man, they be like, look it, because they go back and play that thing in the back of their mind that happened 10 years ago. And they have trust issues because it was like a betrayal that this thing happened. So that's a vulnerability of a person. When I was young, somebody molested me. That's my vulnerability. If I say this to my partner, if my partner tells me when I was young, I was raped by a priest, that's his vulnerability. So him telling me these things will make me understand who he is. So when I'm dealing with him, I can like know how to deal with him on a certain level. Next thing, fantasies. Some people got their different, different fantasies in this life. I call, we call it the fetishes. People got different fetish. Some people got a fetish of the toes, what they just like to suck on their, their lover's toes. Some people got fetish of um, bondage, where they like to like tie their lovers to different things. And these are things that we're gonna discuss when we get into the sex, you know, um, you know, the sex details topic. Some people have fetish where they like to, uh, to, 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 to blindfold their, their lover and, and, and do different things to them. Don't let them touch them as they're doing whatever, doing foreplay and all those things. Different fetishes that you see people have. And some people like to, 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 to choke the people when they're, you know, like, you know, having sex with them. Those are different fetishes. Those are not normal things, but some people like it. They get the high of it. Some people like to get high before they, 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 they engage in sexual activity. Some people like to, 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 hook, to do hookup before they, they, they get into sexual activities. What are these fantasies? Some people like to do threesomes, um, you know, with these things. So what is your, 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 your fantasy? Have you let your partner know? And what is your partner's fantasy? Does your partner let you know? Y'all please share the video and invite your friends. Please share the video and invite your friends. Dark places. Dark places would be things like, um, my dark place would be um, maybe I, I, I have a quick temper. And, um, you know, over the years I have worked on it to the place where for me, if I'm, if I'm upset about something with my partner, I choose to walk away. If I don't walk away, I get to say things that I'm not supposed to say that are very hurtful and, 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 and it, you know, it's not a good thing. So I choose to walk away. 
that's a dark place of mind that I have worked on. Some people dark places is they 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 insult. Some people dark places is they will give you the silent treatment. They go into that place, they give you that silent treatment. I'm not going to talk to you because you're disrespecting me. So you have to feel um, my absence and understand that you can't do this. That's a dark place. When there is no communication, when it's 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 a place that is kind of like hitting from the from the world, like an emotional um, um, abuse. It's putting some, it's a dark place. Emotional abuse is a dark place. So what is that person's dark place? Are they insultive? Are they abusive? What is that person's dark place? What even a dark place could even be, what is their deepest fear? What makes them afraid? Is It could be that, that could be someone's dark place. So what is your, your partner's dark place? Do you know your dark place? Have you let your partner know your dark place and their dark place? All those things are important. Then we go to wonderful places, wonderful places. What makes you happy? Oh, well, I like my, I like to, I mean, I like to give my partners a massage. So um, that's a wonderful place for me. I feel like if I give my energy to them like that and stuff like that, it's good. It's good energy that I'm giving. Um, but what about your partner? What is a wonderful place for your partner? Oh, my partner likes to, um, you know, after sex, sit down and talk about, you know, different things and stuff like that. And that's sleep. That's a wonderful place and things like that. What, or my partner likes to, to go out, um, you know, to, to find restaurants. That's a wonderful place. Um, or we just like to, to hang out in, in the garage and, and, and smoke hookah. So what is your wonderful place? What is your partner's wonderful place? Do you know those things? All these things comes into intimacy. All these things comes into the fact of being intimate. Knowing leads to empathy. I'm going to stop there. Okay, I'm going to read the whole thing and then I'll come back and break it down. Knowing leads to empathy, which leads to genuine acceptance, which in turn paves the way for true intimacy. Excuse me. So knowing leads to empathy. If you know all these things about the person that you're with, you're going to be empathetic towards them. And being empathetic to watch someone is kind of like feeling their pain, understanding where they're coming from. So when they say, I've been like, you know, um, I've been like attacked so many times, not attacked, but I've been betrayed so many times by people I help. So I'm not going to, to help anybody again. Or if I do help somebody, it's not going to be like the way that I would have done it in the past. And so that is, you understand when they tell you that. Now you arguing with them, but, but why we can't help? Why we can't help and stuff like that when they have explained to you the things that they have gone through to get to that place that tells that tells you why they are hesitant. That is empathy. If they tell you, oh, I'm um, doing my 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 pu my not doing my puberty years into young adult. I used to drink. I used to smoke. I was by, and you'd be like, okay, I had a, I had a, a rough childhood. My parents weren't there. My, 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 my mom wasn't there for me. My dad wasn't there for me. I was self-read. All those things, if you have empathy to a per, towards a person, then you would have genuine acceptance. Be like, oh, okay. My girl went through a lot, or my man went through a lot, and I accept him for who he is and if you do that that paves the way into true intimacy mm? some couples have this naturally some need to work harder at it to enrich it and others never achieve it so some couples they just come with a soft heart kind heart whatever you explain to them they kind of like understand they understand enough to say, you know, baby, it's okay. I understand where you're coming from. You must have gone through a lot. And, you know, I get it. Mm? And some people, that's natural. The person don't have to beg them to say, please understand. They just understand. Some need to work at it. Like, okay, I have a relationship and I need to understand these things. This person is no longer who they were. 
they've gone over the hurts and they have become victorious and stuff like that in their situations. So at the end of the day, you know, I just have to, so they kind of like, you know, just make sure that they work on it and others never achieve it. Some people just, they're not ready to, to, to be empathetic. Neither are they ready to be acceptable into what a person says about their life. So they never achieve that intimacy. So um, we are about 36 minutes into it. Um, if you guys have questions, I will start ask, I mean, um, answering questions for you. And if you have um, questions you wanna type down here, feel free to start typing your questions and I'll be here to answer those questions for you. I think we should start asking the questions now and we can open the phone lines, Mr. Moderator. Um, to see who have who wants to come in because we need to make sure that we have these things going. So yeah, that's pretty much um, a breakdown of what the second pillar of intimacy is that leads to knowing and being known. Um, so let's let's bring the questions in, people. Let's ask these questions because we want to make sure that we are doing it. And please share the video as you go on. So and the number to call here is six zero five. 313-6004, And you'll be put into a queue so that we can be able to um, answer those questions for you. Um, don't give up too much about yourself in the beginning. Yep. So let's see. Yep. A lot of times too, um, says Musu has a good point here, patience. Um, with all these things, you have to also give it patience in your relationship. Sometimes people walk away too early. They walk away too soon out of a relationship that could have been a relationship of their life. But just because, you know, they weren't like ready to, to wait. I knew I used to say when I was younger, oh, simple mistake you out, simple mistake you out. But, you know, as I grew older, I stopped saying simple mistake you out. Because your level of like maybe being at a certain maturity level or being at a certain level in a relationship might not be the level that the person is with. I mean, the person that you're with or that you are, you know, with is at. And you guys can't be at the same juncture at the same time. You have to give people a chance to get to where you are if you are farther from them. Especially when, when you are the one, most of the time it's the guys, when you're the one doing the approach, approaching, you know, saying, okay, I want you and stuff like that. And the person say, okay, um, I would think about it. But then you, you want the person to just get to that place. And this is, this is for guys because most of the time it's guys that come out for girls. And you want to want to be right to that place at that same time. No, you have to give her time. You are the one asking for, for her to be with you. You have to give her time to kind of get to know you. And during that time, knowing, as I stated, knowing and being known is part of the intimacy period. So you have to be patient to know who, I mean, when and what to do. And if it's not easy from the beginning, it doesn't mean that it's going to be impossible. Yes, there are some things and that some men that can be like, it will more fun, but... <laughs> I want her. Her wife had enough for children. And it'd be like, well, you know, she's beautiful. She got some beautiful qualities in her. And at the end of the day, I think I can, you know, do something with her. We just need to be able to understand ourselves and stuff like that. And when there are no distractions, when there are no distractions, it can be good. I even put on my page the other day, my Facebook page. I said, sometimes we invite people in our relationship. Let me go back to what I said. I said, the premature invitation of others in something that should be kept private can sabotage any relationship. And it's true. It's very, very, very true. Premature invitation. Sometimes we get into relationship with people and we haven't even gotten a foundation yet. When I start calling my well, my empire. You know, your inner circle is your inner circle. You can talk to your inner circle about things and tell them, hey, you know, I'm talking to this person, you're talking to this person and stuff like that. That's not bad. But when you start extending it to your mother, your father, the whole world, 
and you're not really sure about this person, sometimes it can cause issues though. Hmm? Sometimes it can really, really, really cause issues because we are not at that place. It's like a child. You gave birth to the child and it's not time to take the child outside. In our African settings, when our uh, great-great-grandparents then gave birth in the heart, they can carry the baby outside to bathe. But usually the baby stay in the house. Like I know for a fact that in Ghana, they, they do everything in our heart. They bathe the baby, they cut the baby nail, everything do it right there. And then they give it a week to get to know what this baby name is going to be before they carry the baby outside. And they call it a naming ceremony. The day they carry the baby outside, they're going to be naming that baby. It's a ritual that is done in Ghana. Sometimes we are not ready to take our baby relationship out there. Sometimes the baby's skin is not ready to take the sun, to take the direct sunlight, to take the heat, to take so many other things. And we just put our relationship out there. But you know, Jessica, mm, that one ever or what they play. You know, Mary, mm, that one ever, I slept with her. Now your relationship is out there and it has to stand the test of the outside things, outside factors, whereas you could have kept it in there and built it to a place where when you take it out there, nobody got nothing to say. And even if they have something to say, it will not be listened to. So guide your relationships. If you really see something that you like, guide it and guide it good. If you have to say sorry about something, say sorry about that thing. Don't be the brave one or the, the proud one. Proud people don't have a lot of good things in their life in regards to rewards because they're never humble. And you have to be humble in order for you to be able to get something, some good things in life. Because everything does not come by force. Everything will not come on a plate, a platter, and just be placed in front of you and be like, oh, here you are. Some things you have to work for it. And sometimes you have to put your pride aside. A lot of good relationships sometimes don't last, do not materialize, do not go into fruition because someone there was arrogant, was pride, prideful, proud, and they did not allow the relationship to go. They didn't have the patience and so many other things. I took some little points down here um, in you know when during the week, because now because I'm doing this, I like to make sure that I take these little different points now. Um, do I have questions on Facebook? Let me see. Do we have questions here? Questions uh, from Japa Reeves. Okay, Japa, how are you? Japa asks, um, can a girl fall in love with a little dick nigger? that's very broke well you know falling in love has never been um about and that's a great question falling in love have never been about who a person is financially or the size of their their intimate part falling in love has always been about different reasons so if someone decides to fall in love with you, the fact that you don't have a big dick or maybe you, are, you, are, you don't have money, if they want to fall in love with you, they will fall in love with you regardless of what your social situation is. Love doesn't really come with true love doesn't really come, love doesn't really come with those prerequisites. Right now, a lot of times you see people in relationship and they are not really in love. They are just lusting, but they think they are in love based on 
how they want to perceive it. But that doesn't necessarily mean that that's what it is. So hopefully, hopefully I was able to answer your question. And if I was, please let me know. If you still need me to like um, go deeper, I will go deeper into it. Sis Musu says or ask, how would you suggest a woman or man overcome extreme shyness to become intimate? It's not an easy thing. Great question. It's not an easy thing to overcome extreme shyness. I can remember um, some years ago, I used to be very, very, very uh, shy. I used to be very shy um, when it comes to um, like uh, foreplay, when it comes to a man going down on me and stuff like that. And it wasn't because I was dirty or anything. I just felt that that was very intimate to me. And it was if I was opening up to that place or that level, I was being very vulnerable. So I wasn't like going into those things. Most of the time it's one drop, like, no, 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 no. Come back and stuff, like, come back up and kiss me and stuff like that and all those things. But then I, you know, as you get older or if you, if you just, you know, focus on it and be like, um, this is something that maybe I like, I want to explore, but I don't have it. Um, you know, you, you can find ways and means to talk to your partner about it. If it's an intimate thing, y'all can sit down and talk about it. Say, oh, you know, I kind of like got a little something. If you stick your tongue in my ear or what it is and stuff like that, can you help me with that? Can we do it slowly or something like that? So um, must relationships suffer because of this? If somebody is shy, a relationship shouldn't suffer because of it. I mean, if you're part, if you say you're not okay with, you know, someone going down on you, doing either Kalalinkas or um, the, you know, the, the guy, uh, you, can, you, can, you can tell them and say, I'm not comfortable with it. And if they agree to it, because maybe they're not so or retentive by using their mouth on everything, then you're okay. But if that person is or retentive, it might suffer with the relationship. So that's kind of what it is. How do you know a true relationship? This is from Rhoda Wright. Thank you for your question, Rhoda. How do you know a true relationship? A true relationship has to do with understanding where there are no lies. If a person tells you that they're going to be there. So let's just take true as your keyword here. Mm? So we're going to use true as your keyword. Anything that is absent of true in that relationship is not a good, it's not good in that book based on the terms that we're using. So if, for example, um, you're in a relationship and you're not getting um, truthful answers from your partner. You ask them, where were you last night? Oh, I went to my auntie place. You call the auntie and they say, oh, no, I see John here last night. They're like, oh, John lied to me. Like, um, who, who's calling you? Oh, it's my sister calling me. But then, yeah, John saying to his sister, oh, you know, I love you very much. I was saying that money that you asked me for. And, you know, I just want to tap that thing. Be like, I thought you told me, say so you're talking to your sister. So anything that's absence of truth in a relationship is a relationship that is not. And those red flags will come out. They, they, they don't hide. They do come out and you get to see them. So you get to see them and you understand that these are the things that I did. You can decide that you want to work on it. If the person is ready to work on it, that means if they want to keep the relationship, if they're not, you have to look for your own strategies enough to wait to do it. Some people... Like a friend told me the last time she said, my man used to come home and, you know, late at night. And I know he'd been out with other people, other women. And I just used to, when he get home, honey, what do you want to eat? And, you know, one day he broke down and he cried to me. He said, oh, you know, S Y Z, I I know I've been treating you bad and stuff like that, but you've been so good to me. You've been so, so good to me. And, you know, I'm so sorry about the way that I've been treating you and all those things. So when it comes to, the truthfulness in a relationship, anything that is that 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 is that is that is untrue, then it's not a good relationship. Then you know that it's not a true relationship because people can't say they love you and they be lying to you. 
they be disrespectful to you, they betray you and all those things going behind your back and all those things. And those that's not a true relationship. So hopefully I'm able to answer your question with a great question there. Um, what else? If a woman is overly ambitious, this is Sis Musu, overly ambitious, joint intimacy, is it possible for a guy to sometimes become jealous and start to think about who else she had done this with? Um, yeah, sometimes um, it can be. So like me, um, I, I am wild when it comes to me being there with my man. So I tell them right away that, I mean, I know a lot of things because I've read a lot of books, Kama Sutra, I've read a lot of sex books. I've, I've read a lot of articles on sex and stuff like that. I feel that if you um, should be doing something that is as enjoyable as sex, then you should know it. You shouldn't be there and then you're thinking, people shouldn't be thinking about what to do to turn the panel on and stuff like that. You, sh you should know these things. You should research it and stuff like that. It's not just about laying down and opening your legs for somebody to just go inside you and stuff like that. No, it shouldn't be that way. So for me, I have taken the time to learn these things to be able to give pleasure to my men. One of the things that I do when I'm with my men, if we, when we're done and stuff like that, before we start, I don't give that person a massage and stuff like that, as I stated before. So just kind of like let them be in a relaxed situation or after the, the whole thing and stuff like that, when we're talking, I can give that person a facial, you know, just to, to get them relaxed and be, you know, play some really nice music and things like that. And then afterwards we can put like the ring on you know, to, to be able to fall asleep or put some really nice music on that would just, you know, you know, just put you to sleep and things like that. You have to look for ways and means to, to, to do these things. You can't like, you know, a man, you have to tell them, I know these things. So don't feel like, oh, maybe I've been with so many men and stuff like that. No, that does not mean that I've been with so many men, but I just know these things. And that's what it is. So if you tell the man, that then he will understand but if you don't let him know and you just start you know doing all the while playing and tying him up and stuff like that <laughs> she's been doing it with other people <laughs> so you have to tell the person <laughs> you have to tell the person and stuff like that or what you know and men like these things that's why you see sometimes um you know a man will say i don't want to be with them you know I don't want to be raising no child. They're talking about the relationship with somebody maybe their age or younger than them. I want to be with somebody who's more experienced. And the reason why they might say something like that is because, again, they don't want to be in a situation where they're teaching. They want to be able to learn. They want to be able to see different things and stuff like that. I remember as a kid in Liberia, the woman they used to be talking about <laughs> for the, 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 the chicken feather, and the chicken feather, what they can put our chicken feather in the tin and they can do with the chicken feather and stuff like that. And that chicken feather tin still works up to today. And you know, I used to be listening to it's like, what does that chicken feather tin that woman can be talking about? But that chicken feather tin do work. That thing can, can turn a man upside down, inside out, and let him jump through the window and stuff like that. If you got a chicken feather, try the chicken feather situation, okay? That chicken feather situation is great. So you have to know these things. You, if you're going to engage into intimacy, being intimate with somebody, you have to know these things. And if you are knowledgeable of these things, you have to let a person know that, you know, it's not because I've been out there so many times, but it's just because I'm there. So don't, you don't have to be jealous about, you know, it. just know that I have read about it or I've talked about it or I've listened to tapes about it and these things like that. So that's kind of what it is. Um, any other questions? Any other questions? No, I'm not being, you know, we're not in the sex class, but people are bringing sex questions. And as I say, you know, it's open. So, um, you know, it's open. So you guys have any other questions I'm here to answer. I'm enjoying this though. I'm really enjoying this. Please continue to share the video, invite your friends. This is, it's, it's fun for me because um, I get to come out of my comfort zone a little bit. I mean, it's different when you're like, you know, in an introvertal, introvertal conversation where you're talking about two or three people and you're talking this and you're laughing and stuff like that with it's friends. When you come on, you know, to a, a platform and you're talking to a lot of different people, it's a little bit different too. So um, my first, not my first time, but you know, getting used to, getting used to it. That's okay. Getting used to it. Yeah. So yeah, politics. Is it Jan Daniel? Daniel um, has asked, 
Is it right for a guy to answer his girlfriend's phone? Um, Daniel, I will say it depends. And the reason why I say it depends is this. If you and the person have that um, understanding that she can answer your phone, then you can answer her phone. But if you guys don't have the understanding, if your phone is sacred to you, then her phone should be sacred to her. So that's why it depends. Hopefully I was able to answer your question for you. Next question, um, let's see. These stuff is that great? Yeah. Yes, it's true. We don't talk about these things. So after seven years and a person decides to walk out, is that too late or too early? Um, Raphael, Ralph, after seven years, if a person decides to walk out, is that too late or too early? Um, when I say too late, too early is really relative. Too late or too early is relative because um, some people don't like change. I, I don't like change. If I fought a relationship and I felt the relationship was worth fighting for, I will fight for it. But if it wasn't, it would take me a longer time than most people because I don't like change. So if you're like me and I don't like change, then it will have taken you a longer time to come to terms and realize that, hey, I've, I've come to a closure. I've come to a snack and there's nothing I can do. I have done everything that I have tried to do to make this work and it's just not working. So at the end of the day, you know, I gotta let it go. So it, it, the, 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 the time is relative to each and every situation. Um, it, it has to do with your perception about the whole thing. It, it, it cannot be uh, my perception because I used to be a simple mistake you out situation girl, but then I decided changing that and going to a place of patience I became a 10 year situation where, you know, I was like, I, I think this will work. I think this will work and it didn't work. So, you know, it's relative, it's relative. If you see that it does not work and you've tried, usually when you push that long and you get to that place, you don't get to regret because you know that you tried everything and you stayed long in trying to make it happen or trying to change the situation. So you don't get to think about it when the walk out comes, it's like, adios, goodbye, amigos. Because, you know, you you tried, you did everything that you could do. Or goodbye, amigo, or senorita, whatever it is. You you tried and it just didn't work out. It's like, okay, I know I, I gave it my all. Nobody will spoil my name and say I didn't try. Or that person will not spoil my name and say I didn't try because I gave it my all. That was seven years. Then you can put that time frame to it but time frames are, rel are relative to the individual. Um, I wouldn't agree with you on it. It depends on concerning answering her calls. What is there to hide? Again, um, and, uh, Mr. Um, NKT Pekin, um, you don't have to agree with me because again, as I stated, it depends. There are no right and wrong answers here. If you are able to give your phone to your woman to answer, then you can answer her phone. If you cannot give your phone to her, please do not touch her phone. I don't think it's fair on her part for you to do that. So that's it. That's just what it is. So uh, let's see. Um, any other questions? You know, a lot of times um, men think that they, they are supposed to, to have monopoly over a relationship where you're supposed to do something to the woman, but the woman is not supposed to do something like this situation right here. Like, why would you feel that it's okay for you to take someone's phone and answer it if she's not answering your phone? Why? Why in the world would you think that that's okay? We're not in a slave situation here. A relationship is a, it's a mutual agreement. So if you don't feel comfortable with her picking up your phone and answering it, don't feel comfortable picking up her phone and answering it. That's just it, period. Mm -hmm. Let's go to the next thing. Um, I put some points here. As I said, I took these little points and stuff like that. 
So, um, so I can be able to kind of share with you guys. No matter how much crap you've been through, no matter how many times you've made, um, others have made you feel a certain way, please know that you have some qualities that makes you awesome. In a relationship, sometimes we go through a whole lot of crap. We go through a whole lot of uh, things that people tell us that we embrace and we carry along. But if you understand you and understand some of the things that you have, it will help you be able to move on to the next relationship. Because I know some relationship can be so abusive where people can say the worst things. If you leave me with your three children, nobody will want you again and all the kind of things and stuff like that. And you, if you leave me, nobody will be able to take your crap like I take it and all those things. People threaten their partners. And when these things happen, it's like you feel that you can't move on because you accept what they've told you. So, no. It's, it's you know, don't believe what people tell you. When you go into a relationship, take a new slate. Don't say, a lot of times people bring their old relationships into the new relationship and it causes a lot of problems. Even like this phone situation that we're talking about here, it could be from a previous relationship, but now you're in a relationship with somebody else and you want to bring that because maybe that previous relationship had you jumping all over the place because this person was being dishonest and they will, you know, be on the phone or somebody will call them and you ask them, who called you to my brother? Who called you to my uncle from Minnesota? Oh, no, no, my papa from the bureau and stuff like that. So you think now that, at the end of the day, it's okay for, 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 so you broke that relationship up. Once you break it up, leave it there. Leave it there. Just leave it alone. Don't bother it for it anymore. But you bring it into your new relationship and you be like, because my old girlfriend wanted it, the other one will be like it too. So by the time her phone rings and stuff like that, I'll, I'll, I'll pick it up. No, do not invade people's privacy like that. If you are not open for your privacy to be invade, invaded, then don't invade another person's privacy. So let me go to the next thing that I put down here for us. Yeah, please continue to share the video and invite your friends. Um, you have to love yourself so that others will love you for who you are. A lot of times we find ourselves not loving ourselves. The way we dress, the way we smell, the way we carry ourselves. And if you don't love yourself, who's going to love you? If you don't love yourself, know that you're supposed to love yourself. Who is going to love you? No one. You have to start self-love with yourself. That love has to be in your heart for yourself. Where you be like, this is what I would do for myself to take myself to the next level. This is how I will smell. This is how I will look. This is how I will take myself out there. All these things. You do it, and then you look out. And once you treat yourself good, people will treat you good. The way you carry yourself, the way you eat, the way you articulate, all those things. Somebody see it and be like, damn. That, 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 that individual is it's, 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 it's cool. I want to get to know who that individual is. But you carry yourself good. You sit down, you open your legs, wow. You put your hand up, people smell it all under your arm and stuff like that. You can't even articulate if that's the standard that person is on. No, they're not going to look towards you and say, oh, okay, this is somebody that I might like or I'm attracted to, no. I tell people I'm a sapiosexual. A sapiosexual is someone who is attracted to intelligence. Yes, my man got to be intelligent. And that's the first thing that draws me to him before anything else, even before the emotional part comes in or the sexual parts comes in. So what is it pertaining to you when it comes to yourself? that you want the other people to be able to see. You have to acknowledge those things yourself. Your self-worth has to be up for other people to notice it. You have to showcase it. 
Another thing is having a PhD in relationship experiences is a receipt for chaos, bringing the wahala from previous relationship under the, the, the guise of um, being lovely and overly careful. Yep, yeah, that's a good point. Any other questions, people? Is the phone line open? Do we have any calls here? Uh, let's see. Please continue to invite your friends and share the video. Uh, let's see. I have um, another. Okay, here's a good one. So I was, I was um, you know, I do these research, these different research during the week from Friday to Wednesday because, you know, I want to try to get more things to be able to see on the show once I go through the, 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 the topic that is being discussed. And if you're just joining, this is your girl, Lady J, and I'm on the Focus on Liberia platform and I'm discussing um, the four pillars of intimacy. Last week, we discussed pillar number one. Um, today, we're doing the second pillar, which is knowing and, be believe, knowing and being known. And um, it's, it's at the beginning of the show, so you can always go back in and look into it. And um, I, was I was looking into something and I remembered what a friend of mine and I was discussing the last time, and he said, men get attracted by their eyes and what they see, and women get attracted by their heart, what they feel. So attraction comes in different ways. And um, so when a man is already attracted by what he sees, you know, you know, woman and stuff like that, that's just that phase, one of it. So where do we go from there? Again, we come back to the knowing situation here. But um, well, how do you keep the man? Because, you know, that's the first attraction, the eyes. They, they see you and you got some good things in there and they'll be like, oh, she got a good body. She got good this, good that. But what is next after that? A lot of times, you know, people, women like, women don't even know that they are being objectified when men say, oh, beautiful, how beautiful and this, this, this and stuff like that when you know they are not looking into personalities but they are looking at the features the physical features though to describe them it's not a good thing to objectify someone women too as i said we fall in love with our heart or we get attracted with our heart so you see a man you be like oh he's a fine man i think I, I i like him a lot and stuff like that and that's the first thing and then every other thing every other sense or logic that we have coming to play after that so men are different when it comes to, to that. Women are different when it comes to that. How do you put these two together in a, in, a, in a situation where you can make the best of it? Because that's the initial situation. So again, knowing, knowing that person, getting to know that person. Sometimes in, 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 before you know somebody, you got to know yourself. Like you have to know yourself. And do we know ourselves? Can you sit down and tell somebody, genuinely about who you are without lying can you tell people your 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 your, your dark your dark places your vulnerability your fantasies and all those things can you do that your wonderful places sometimes we can't because we don't know ourselves so another thing i like to inject in pillar number two is know yourself know thyself if you know yourself you will be able to exhibit what needs to be exhibited to know someone. You know yourself. It's not a good place to be. And some people rather don't know themselves. They don't love themselves. They don't know themselves. They're just living oblivious to whatever is going on. And without those integral factors, there is no way that you can find a good relationship. There are some things in the, in, in, the, in, the, in the equation that just cannot be pushed away. There are some things in the equation that just cannot be ignored. You have to find a way to know yourself and love yourself for outsiders to know and love you. So let's see what we got going here. Um, Another thing, looks can be deceiving. That says Musuva. Yes, feelings can go south in a second. Yep, you're right. You know, um, I, I, I'm watching this Love is Blind experience on Netflix where people were taken into this um, um, mansion 
and they have these pods that they sit in and it's divided. So they don't get to see each other, but they just talk to each other and get to know what's your name, the person on the other side. My name is James. James, what do you like? Oh, I like this and stuff like that. And they form an emotional bond. And then if they form that bond to the place where they, they be like, okay, um, I have a strong feeling. I haven't seen the person physically. Then they ask um, the person if they want to, to, to get engaged to them because the thing is you, you form the bond, bond with the person, then you get engaged to the person and then in four weeks they get married. So then the physical part comes where they get to see each other and they get engaged when they get to see each other. And then they get put into the real world where they have to go into, you know, with the, so see family members and stuff like that. And in four weeks, they got to get married. And some people, you know, with all of that, they're saying love is blind. I don't think it's blind. And I don't think that, you know, um, it's just the physical part that, that blinds us. There are so many other things because some people did, did feel that they were connected emotionally. But then like one of the guys, he hid that he was a bisexual and he got engaged to this girl. And they went to the results where they were spending time together. He was like, oh, I have to tell you something. And she was like, what is it? And he told her and she went berserk. So again, I just see knowing, you know, when I was watching it, I just started smiling because Knowing and being known is a part of intimacy. That is something that keeps you together. He didn't tell the woman on time and then we went to, to, she got so upset and they did not carry on our relationship. She walked away. And at the end of the day, he was there cussing the woman and telling her how her week, being shaking the whole time. He'd been talking to her and stuff like that. And their relationship just went into thin air. So again, let's look into that, that, that part, they say love is mine, but no, there are so many other components, so many other components that is put together to be able to make a relationship work. I don't think it's just one. And I will continue to say it because um, we all come from different backgrounds. We all come from different, uh, you know, trainings. We all come from different experiences. You bring yours, the person bring theirs. You'll get to understand and know each other and decide that I will accept you for who you are. You will accept me for who I am. And then we kind of like move on. And when I say accepting, not a bad way, it's accepting where the person can drink and can misbehave and say, okay, I will accept you for your drinking and miss. No, 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 no. Acceptance somebody for who they are has to do with their vulnerabilities, things that they have no control over, not addictions. There are things that people don't have any control over based on their, their past. So that's what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about situations where you just go to be doing it. Well, oh, I need your empathy. Oh, I need, no, no, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about vulnerable things, things that are vulnerable that you accept and say, you know what? I accept and stuff like that. I'm sure if he had told that girl from the get go and explain why he was bi uh, when he was younger or he was a young adult, she probably would have been able to understand and, and do what needs to be done. So uh, let me see what I have to do here. Do we have any calls? You guys call me or ask questions, huh? Let's call and ask questions. Let's, let's get some questions rolling. Let's get some questions rolling. Let me see how many. All right, so we've been here. We're almost um, about um, at the... We're, getting to that place so um where we're going to be you know going out of um, off air so if you have any questions um, please ask those questions don't feel shy to ask your questions because you never know you know if this could be a situation where it could help you uh, bring some clarity to you a lot of times we don't want to um say anything i think i got a caller on the line if there's a call on the line, let's bring the caller in. If there is a caller. Hello? I'm here. Hello? Yeah, who's this? This is Anthony. Uh, Lady Jane, how are you? I'm good. Anthony Gay from last week? Anthony is here this time. Oh, Anthony. Okay. Anthony, what's your question? Um... I have a question, but 
want to make comment first. Okay. Uh, something you said about this couple and uh, the man was always going out with friends and coming by late and the woman tried to be nice to him throughout. And that this day he came from out and the woman continued to be nice by serving him. And he broke down and he started to cry. And then he would more like confess, oh, I mean, I'm not being nice to you, but you kept being nice to me. I don't know what uh, that situation had to change that man to become uh, the man the woman wanted. Uh, I'm breaking this up because it's one of the things that speaks to what you were talking about time, that it depends on time. Because somebody asked a question, is seven years too early uh, to leave? Or uh, is seven years too much of a time to stay? And, and I don't know the story you gave, whether they have been in a relationship for a long time. But what we can gather from that is that uh, this is the woman who got to know herself first. Okay. And you were emphasizing on knowing yourself and being known. Right. My understanding here is that the woman got to know herself. Knowing yourself, you get to know what you also want. That's right. why the man having this behavior of not showing respect and going out. She knew herself and she also knew what she wanted. Right. And still she stayed the course uh, to the point that she was able to break the man down um, morally. Okay. And the fact that he cried is somebody that has sense and, you know, uh, he will try to be the man you know he can be. In other words, he can become a better man. Right. And so this is the thing. Can we use love to change somebody? Uh, I think that's what that lady did right there. I know she had things that she was going through, but she really had loved this man. And so she stayed the course and she used that power of love by showing it through her behavior, through the nice treatment you know, to this man and she got him to that point. Or uh, is that a way that you advise anybody, be a man, uh, to treat their partner if their partner is going contrary to their expectation? Yes, and that's a good question. I want to go into details. Um, you see, Anthony, thank you so much for that question. That's a huge question, and it's good that you brought it up. Um, men, I have heard so many times. And even I heard a live yesterday that I kind of was on for about some minutes. Men, um, some men will do these things. And, okay, so men, for example, just if we're putting men in a category, men don't like Wahala. Yeah. That's any human being, for example, don't like Wahala. Women don't, people don't like drama. They might come out as being traumatic. They might come out as being people that, you know, are confrontational and all those things. But most people, human nature, they, they, they prefer to be um, in a non-combative situation. So coming back to your question, a man does not appreciate a woman who is always fighting him. He comes home. What are he being all that other women and stuff like that? She's fighting him. She's like, you know, putting her hand in his face, trying to do whatever and stuff like that. A man don't want to come home if he knows that he's going to meet such. So he might stay out there more because he wants to avoid this person that is not giving him that. And maybe if he's there, he's just there because of maybe certain situation. So if you see a man like that, and you guys decide to move in together and you see all these things about him and you didn't say nothing to him and you decide to move in together and he starts to behave this way, you can decide to be patient 
and make him understand that no other woman out there would take this thing from you but me you belong to me and if you do it in a way where you know you show that patience and that love to him he might or you can let him know when it's not a fighting situation babe i love you i understand you know you got some ways in you that you 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 are stuck with but it really hurts me when you go out there and you sleep out or it hurts me when you're on the phone with other women and stuff like that i mean is there anything that i can do in our relationship to make you focus on me and me alone um a lot of times people express themselves when they are upset instead of expressing themselves when there is no problem so she used the the patient approach the kind approach that if you treat me bad i would treat you kind and he having a conscience he was able to, 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 to you know, to, to, to identify that what she was doing and be able to, to, to respond to it the way he did. So in this situation, it was a win situation for them because she applied patience and kindness towards a situation that was meant to be confrontational. I worked on the phone for many years as a customer service agent and with angry customers. And one of the things that they told us to do is if a customer is on the line and they're yelling, you have to keep a tune like, ma'am, I understand you're upset. I'm trying to make sure I help you. No, you're lying. You're la 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 la. You're, you're, you're a bitch. This, this, this. Ma'am, I, I, I will do my best to see how best we can sit to, you know, correct this situation. I truly apologize. If you continue to speak in that tune, that person on a high costing level would come down because first and foremost, now they want to try to hear what you're saying. So instead of them yelling out, their voice starts to come down. And you're not meeting up with them. So they try to kind of like stop being so um, you know, agitated. And before you know, everything's everything comes down and they're talking to you normally. So as I say, sometimes people are way ahead of you in maturity in a relationship and you are right there, but you have to try to bring that person to where you are for you to be. So if this person is here and you are here and you really love that person, you have to draw that person to you so that you can come together. So I hope I was able to answer your All question. Right. Yeah, thank you. Uh, let me let's talk about intimacy a little bit. And I will give a scenario and then I'll end with a question and then I will leave you. Okay. So this is Joe Blue, just from the village. And luckily, after a year of stay in Moravia, he managed to come to the US. And the expression of sexuality here uh maybe the war advance might be appropriate in this sense and so joblo got this relationship and he doesn't know about eating the apple or you know or going for the banana you know he doesn't know all of that you know his all drinking uh those are things he did not even hear about and yet he in this relationship and the partner is, you know, trying to introduce that. How best can the partner, the female now in this case, uh, introduce this expression uh, to Joe Blow to avoid conflict? Well, again, it has to do with teaching. That's a great question. Thank you for that question. It has to do with getting to know your partner and letting your partner know you. So if this person is into um, the act of, you know, being um, intimate by using the mouth and Joe Blow does not know it, they have to, you know, talk to Joe Blow about it. Say, oh, Joe Blow, have you, you know, done this before? You know, the thing I, I know about relationship is reciprocal, being reciprocal. If Joe Blow likes uh, the the act of being uh, sucked by a woman, he should also be able to reciprocate and be able to use his mouth to make love to a woman as well. So if that's something he likes, 
she can use that. If he doesn't like it and he doesn't know it, she can say, you know, let me try it on you so that you can see. And if he she, she tries it on him and he likes it, baby, you like that? You like it when I suck you? And he says, yes, then she can be like, can you try it on me too? Maybe he might not know how to do it from the get go. He might be really sloppy and nasty, but that's a way that you were teaching. So no, you know, just go down there and don't look at it as anything, whatever. Enjoy the view and then stick your tongue on and just start to lick that area. Don't go inside. You're licking that area right between there. You see that area right there? That thing right there that's sticking out? That's what you need to lick up and down, up and down. And he will learn how to do it. So at the end of the day, they start to. But you have to have these conversations with the person. You cannot just expect them to know or you tell them once you're in the act of doing it, no, you prepare people for things like this so that if that's the way it's going to be, then they will, they will, they will actually be able to do it. When you when you're talked about it, you can even watch movies that has to do with it. So, you know, that's how it's done. And then when he gets to that place, then he will know what to do. Anthony, are you still there? Hello? Yes. Yes. I got a question. Okay, what's your question? What's your name? My name is Jerome. Okay, Jerome, Thank what's you your question? This. Thank you for the great show. Uh, You're welcome. I, these are the show people I try to call on, but it's very, very much educated. But my question here is, I wanted to know that uh, if you're trying, like, like what you say, you or, or, or you read books uh, and you learn, you, you learn new things, so that and then uh, you try to exercise that or start your relation up in the day, try to try new things, and your your partner begins to question you or begin to notice that and start asking you where you learn this new thing from and they begin to uh, uh, be uh, skeptical on on you thinking that maybe it's or, or, or another guest just taught you a that way you bring it in the bed but you're just trying to pass your relationship off. What 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 do you do in that situation when you're trying to introduce new things in the bed? Um, great question, Jerome, and thank you so much for um, um, asking. Again, when it comes to uh, Philagio and Carlolingus, which is licking, a, um, sucking a, a, a woman or licking a woman and sucking a man, you have to, to, to be able to tell your partner what you like. You see, intimacy is such that if you don't get it in, in that bedroom, you're going to go outside to look for it if that's what you crave for. So with that being said, y'all can sit down and discuss it because one partner is in, the, in, in that place of desiring to have that brought into their bedroom and the other is and does not know about it or how to go about it or do it. So if you are the, 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 the knowledgeable partner, you have to walk your partner through the situation and tell them, hey baby, so um, I want for us to be able to do this because I like it and I wanna show you how to do it. If that person has a problem with the way the woman smells, then he can also you know, either reach out to, to, to someone who knows how to, to, to Sunday or let, tell them that person, can you please talk to, you know, not, not somebody, just anybody, but you know, just teach the woman, use lime or use this to clean yourself and all those things. And you know, then you can move to the next part. If it's the woman that's looking to have the man do that again, she can be able to teach him how to do it. So any any intimate thing that is done in the bedroom, any sexual act, uh, oral sex that is done, anal sex, whatever it is that you like that floats your boats, that you like, and you want for your partner to be on it, you have to express it to them. You cannot put it to them when you're in the act of doing it, no. So some girls, they like anal sex. They just like anal sex. So sometimes they don't tell the man 
or if they're if they're just meeting him and stuff like that, instead of putting it in the in a, in a vagina, they just put it in the back there and stuff like that. And the man could like, be like, oops, and stuff like that. And he gets used to the fact that this is what she likes. That's what floats her boat. But you have to get to that one is a random one where it can just happen and happen. And he likes it. Most of the time, guys would like it and they will continue doing it without you know any hesitation. Some people might not like it. They might be like, oh, what are you doing and stuff like that. So in some partners, you have to talk to them, but in other people, you just have to, you know, do it during the time. But you have to know, again, knowing and being known. You have to know your partner to know how to approach it. Thank you very much, Esther. Thank you for answering the question. You're welcome. Uh, and then uh, talking about, I heard the first quarter that was asking you about Joe Blow coming from the village and trying to do this. Uh, uh, my last question before I go here is, if you're trying to try this kind of thing to your partner, you say, let me try it on you. Uh, and she begins to refuse and say, no, uh, I don't want you to do that uh, uh, to me. But then you want her to do it to you. But you try to either give it to her first to, to, to see the taste or the feeling. But she refusing you from uh, 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 inter introducing her to that new stage. And, and you, you want to do it, but there's nothing you can tell her to say, okay, let me try this uh, with a guy since he, uh, he wanted. And what do you do with such a, a, a person that always refuse to uh, say, okay, um, I, I want this, but you don't want it. But can you do it to me? And they, and they keep saying no, 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 no. So what are you talking do? about like oral sex? Yes, they're going down. So going down where you like for her to do it to you and she doesn't want you, she doesn't want to do it to you, but she wants you to do it to her? Yeah. No, 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 I want, I want her to do it to me, but I want to do it to her first. But she said no, she don't want me to do it to her. You see, so and she said, oh, I don't want. I uh, it, maybe she would say it tickle me, or I don't, I, I don't feel comfortable with you or uh, you do it to me. But I want her to do it to me. But instead of her do it, her do, do it to me first, I want to introduce it to her. But she refused me to do it to her. But I want it, and I, I can't get it. So what do I do to make her get used to it or do it to me? So um, there are many um, techniques that can be used um, to be able to create that atmosphere of, um, of what that you could do. And maybe the reason you have to find out from her first and foremost why she doesn't want it. Maybe she's being mutilated. And if she's being mutilated, that's not something she would want for you to touch at all in her life. So you have to find out from her why she doesn't like it. And it can be a very touchy subject because some people don't want to open up themselves. Like for me, as I stated, it took me a long time. I think I was in my 30s before I decided to open up for somebody to go down on me. Not because I smell bad or I was mutilated or anything like that. No, I just thought that that is the most intimate part of me. That it's kind of like my my I call my, you know my innermost part, and I felt if somebody mm -hmm. is is exploring that innermost part of me, it's a vulnerability, and I had an issue with it. So it took me some time, but as I continue to read books and stuff like that, I seen that. That is one of the most, um, you know, enjoyable part of love making. So I had to, to push that fear aside, and you know, allow my partner to go down on me. So you have to find out from her what are her fears, and then when you find out from her what are her fears, you can let her know that you know I love you the way you are, um, you know, and stuff like that to give her that reassurance. You can also, you know. Like, you know, start using some, you know, you don't have to go from the very beginning, but you can begin those. Let me put some, you know, um, like some honey or some ice cream there and just lick it off. And then you can feel it and tell me how you feel and, and things like that. And you have to get people in the mood, Mr. Jerome. And you have to get people in the mood 
to be able to get to that place. Can't you start a thing and say, I won't go down there. Sometimes the person not in the mood, they're not going to be receptive. So you have to get them in the mood. Mm? Because when people are in the mood, there's not a lot of things that they can say no to, especially when you guys have talked about it. So try to get some ice cream, try to get something, um, some liquid that is like, you know, that you can use and just say, let me just try it. Or just try to kiss it. You know, if she has hair on there, you can say, you know, can can I get use my 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 my, my stuff? You know, the stuff that they 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 they, they the way I use the shaver. Can I use my shaver to clean the hair from on here and stuff like that? Help her get out of it. You can start with that. Say, babe, I want to clean. I want to to so shave your hair. Let her be able to open her lay on the back on her back and open her legs in front of you, and you clean and shave that place. Let her feel comfortable with you looking at it and visualizing it and stuff like that. And then maybe you can go from there. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Do we have another caller? Um, do we, can a female be effective in the, what did? What you got, you know? <laughs> I don't know what you got, you know, so Eric. Can a female be effective in the you know? What they call you know? In, talking about anal? Oh, anal? Um, can a female be effective in her anal? In like anal sex? Yeah, I mean, definitely. That's a, that's a special place too. Some people, the feeling that a woman feels in her vagina is different from the feeling that she'll feel in her, in her, in her anal. And so if, if, if there are two different feelings, because there are, there are two different things. The rectum has a different kind of, um, you know, feeling that it, that a male feels when he goes in there. The vagina has a different kind of feeling. So if the vagina is like, it's like this. And if 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 he goes in there, there are there are lines in it. If the woman has her grips and everything in there, there are lines in it. So he goes in there and it's it's like this. You know, he goes in there and it grips it grips him. The the anal is the rectum. It does not have grips in there. But it's, 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 it, 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 there are things in there that can stimulate the dependence of the man when he puts in there. So, you know, it's again, what floats your boat when it comes to that. So, yes, a person can be effective in that, you know. Some women are ashamed of the, the smell. Yes, some women are ashamed of the smell. And that's why, if that's the case, uh, men, you can tell your women, you can go to the supermarket, I mean, to uh, Walgreens or the supermarket and look for what we call a douche. You don't necessarily have to use the douche. There'll be some water in the douche, um, douche summer eve. You can buy that, pour it out, and she can use, she can use lime. She can pour lime or you can fix the lime in the water, give it to her and she can just douche. Men, you are not, you know, I don't like it when men think that they are outside of when it comes to cleaning the women or helping the woman get to a place of feeling satisfied to be go to, 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 to go down upon. If you really love this woman and you really want to be able to go down on her and she's not comfortable, whatever that needs to be done for you to be able to do it, you better do it, brother man. Sometimes you'll be taking yourself, oh, I know that we're wanting there and stuff like that, but you want to go down on a woman and you don't know that we're wanting there and stuff like that. You have to find a way to be able to break past that barrier. So if there's this smell, if you put your hand in her and you smell it and stuff like that, you teach her first and foremost, if you guys are having sex without a condom, you tell her, honey, when we finish having sex and my sperm gets in you, it's not good for the sperm to sit in you for a long time. So you have to go and wash up. You have your little washcloths there and everything that you need, they call it a business cloth. You go, you have a little business cloth there. She takes it, she put, she put water on it and insert it in her and clean in her and stuff like that. That takes away any kind of smell. It keeps a woman to have a, a, a very healthy vagina um, in regards to her walls. And it, it keeps it clean. If you stay, you know, the person finished, the sperm sit down inside you, the sperm, the pH balance of the sperm, the, 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 the sperm, what the sperm has, and the pH balance of a woman's a vagina does not mix. When it mix, it, it, it omits um, an odor. So if the person is not using a condom, then you have to make sure you clean after yourself 
after an intercourse, after a man has come into you so that those things cannot be there. If you are dry and you're looking for ways and means to remain wet for when he comes into you, then you have to make sure that you look for like a lubricant because some women, they, they want the sperm to stay in them because sometimes they, they, they don't like, you know, water properly. So or they don't moist properly. So they want, the, you know, the sperm to stay in them as a ways and means of using that, you know, as something so that it can be, uh, there can be no friction. If that's the case, a sperm is not uh, a lubricant that's supposed to be used. You can find different lubricants on the market that are used. People use KY. I don't like KY. I like the real um, lubricant. And there are, there are different kinds of lubricant that you can spend. They got sex stores around. You can go into the sex stores and stuff like that. But if you just want to do the KY or like the two-in-one oil, you can go and get it, a lubricant. And then you can use it inside you so that it's moist when the person comes in. So that it's not, you know, you don't feel that friction or, or pain. Oh, it's called own in Liberia. Oh, okay. All right, so, um, well, um, people, we have um, come to the end of the show. If you're just joining, this is your girl, Lady J, and um, we discussed the second pillar of uh, intimacy today, knowing and being known. Um, we went over everything that has to do with knowing and being known, knowing your partner and your partner knowing you and what um, the important things that are in it that makes an, an, um, you know, a relationship intimate um, I want to say thanks to my callers that I called in. It was very nice uh, for you to call in and ask those questions. You guys, please don't be embarrassed to ask these questions. Uh, every day we have relationships that fail because we are not up to par with something maybe our partner might want or they are not up to par with what we want. And I know for a fact that being in a bad relationship can affect every area of your life. Being in a good relationship and being in love with your partner can affect your overall well-being as a human being. So we want to try to look for good, rewarding relationships. We want to try to be in our relationships. We want to try to make sure that we give our relationship its all, our all, so that we can be able to to come to terms with how it feels to be happy with another person. It's not a, um, a bad thing for you to be single. If you are single at this time, it's not a bad thing. Sometimes you have to be single to be able to find yourself, find who you are, and then you'll be able to move from there. So I wanna say thanks to my callers, thanks to the people that put um, all the little questions here. I'm your girl, Lady J, and uh, my platform is Everything Liberia. Uh, Notwithstanding, I have been, it's been an honor to be on the Focus on Liberia platform discussing relationship and sex. I want to say thanks to you all, and you have a great evening. <laughs>